a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. No one had driven this way in a long time but I saw a few hoof prints. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. 
Edie told me the bricks came from the original house, after it sank. Great-Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Hmm. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Barbara was a child star for two years, until America grew out of it. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. Yeah. 